Hi guys, I hope that you are doing okay. On the menu for today, I have this box with the new Z-Way DSO 154 Pro Oscilloscope. I already reviewed previously uh, two Z-Way oscilloscopes, but at that time I reviewed them as SIGPIC. And only after those videos, I came to know that SIGPIC is the former name of the Z-Way. The oscilloscopes that I reviewed were very good, but I did complain a lot of not having any support channel like a website, email or even a WhatsApp channel. But that changed and I'm going back to this topic ahead on the video. Even after I managed to open a conversation channel with Z-Way, this item was not sent for review by them. It was bought by me, since after reading the specs, I thought that will be an interesting item to review and let me say that buying this device was only possible because of you. Yes, when you use the affiliate links on the description or the affiliate access links here on the screen, you allow me to receive a very small fee whenever you buy something. It is the same price for you and a big help for the channel and allow me to do these review videos. So a big thank you for all of you that use these links in the past or intend to use it in the future. You rock! Without further ado, let me show you why I think this oscilloscope might be the new king of small oscilloscopes under 50 bucks. As usual, the first thing that we are going to do is to see what is the lever with this oscilloscope. Let's open the box. Okay, the version I have here uh, brings this little stand. Let me open. We have a, a, a cable BNC to scissors, uh, to crocodile, yeah. And also a little clip so you can have the oscilloscope on a vertical position. Yeah, the normal, I think this is the P6100's probe, yeah, no, no news about it. It's pretty standard in these ship oscilloscopes. Also, we have a power cable and it's USB Type-C, very good news. And inside this bag, we have the levered. Let me take the box out of the way and the bag. We have delivered the oscilloscope. We have delivered also this small user manual. Yeah, all in English. Yeah, it's not big, but it seems to have condensed most of the information. And the bandwidth is 1 megahertz to 18 megahertz, 40 mega samples per second of sampling rate, yeah, it seems okay. I like this, the key pass seems to be already printed with the, the color, so yeah, it means a lot. So, let's see what we get with this. Okay, for first impressions, the first thing that comes to my mind when I saw uh, this uh, device, uh, it seems the old models from Fnixi. I have here my Fnixi 138 Pro, and yeah, they seem very similar. Even the the same color in in the in these gold letters and well the the border around, they are very very similar if you see even the the height of the screws here everything seems a deja vu from this device one of the difference between these two guys is the that z-way has 18 megahertz of uh, bandwidth and 40 uh, sampling rate of 40 mega samples per second while this one has 2.5 mega samples per second, I think, and uh, it has only 200 kilohertz bandwidth, so not even closer. 
This one is made by Z-Way. We have here on the top the BNC input. We have uh, a mechanical switch for AC-DC coupling. The output from the signal generator, the common here. We have a USB Type-C connector and also the power button. I don't know what this is. Ah, this is the, the connector for the battery. And that's it, basically. Nothing much. When charging, we have a red light in here. And when it is charged, this will become a green light. So it's good to have this kind of aid uh, when working with these devices. We have also, uh, let me show you. Eight buttons, uh, the OK Auto, the Stop, Menu and Modes, up and down and left and right. So it cannot be simpler than this. Let's power this on and see what we have here and how is the operation of this small device. Now is the time to talk about this video sponsor, PCBWay. I always use PCBWay for creating my boards with a professional factory quality as you saw in my millivolt voltage reference board. It is very cheap to manufacture your PCBs on PCBWay. You can manufacture 10 PCBs for only 5 bucks. How awesome is this? And it is pretty easy also. Just insert here the PCB dimensions and you'll have an instant code. So when you want a PCB, visit PCBWay to get your code. And if it is your first time ordering from PCBWay, you can use our access link for a $5 credit. And don't forget, they also have component assembly service, a 3D printing service and much more. Okay, now that we have the zoom uh, already in place, let's start this. Okay, we have a small logo. And I will start by describing what we have on the, on the screen. So we have the run stop icon, the brand, the memory buffer, uh, the trigger mode, and the rising or falling edge. These show you the, the battery usage, of, of course. In here we have a small representation of the waveform that is being generated right now. We have the voltage time division for controlling with the keys, and I will show you how to change that. Also the time division, the probe uh, compensation, and also the amplitude or the vertical division. In the screen we have three main measures, but we can have a lot more. I will show you in a bit how to do that. And basically this is what you have on the screen. You can change these modes because when using the, the keys left or right moves the time division. Okay, you have here the time division changing. Up or down, change the amplitude or the vertical division, the voltage. When you press mode, you will have the chance to move the line in the buffer, okay, to see the whole signal, or up and down, okay. And I think that's it. Okay, and pressing menu shows the menu of the system. I will go through every option in this menu in a bit. We have the stop, as you see, it's here. Okay, and the auto button. And that's it. So what is missing? Let me show you the menu. In terms of menu, we have the measurements. You can use this menu. You have here the auto is also the OK key. So you have this little cursor, this red dot there, that you can navigate, it's an arrow, it's not a dot, but you can navigate over here and select what um, other options you want to display. As you see, I just activated RMS and you can uh, activate whenever, whatever you want. Yeah, from these options. We have uh, 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 14, or all options. So it seems quite complete. 
let me take this out because it takes a lot of space in the screen that's a small screen and the first menu is measurements the second menu and to change the menu you just use the mode because if you press menu it will take the menu out the second menu it's the trigger menu for trigger you can have auto or normal trigger you can have the trigger level on auto or manual and you can have the trigger edge rise or fall the next menu it's the display menu and in this menu you can activate the persistent uh, one second or infinite you can activate also the rolling uh, on or off and you can change the brightness of the screen just by uh, okay and as you can see pressing you have to press like buttons to to change moving on we have the prop compensation for one time 10 times and 100 times yeah it's he it supports 100 times prop compensation at least for the the mat he does we, we have a auto shutdown that we can always uh, activate and also you have Chinese and English as uh, optional you have also in this display in this menu the calibration menu to to calibrate everything and the last menu is one of my favorites in this small device is the signal generator I will come back to this menu when I will sh I'm demonstrating the functionalities of the signal generator right now I will leave it and that's it uh, now I will take this out of the screen and I will connect to my function generator to test the this device to the maximum frequencies he says it can handle so let's do it okay I have my function generator already connected to the BNC input I will connect now and the first bandwidth that I will test it's a sine wave with 200 kilohertz this bandwidth it's not by chance uh, randomly chosen uh, I choose this bandwidth because it's the maximum bandwidth of this device the FNIRSI 138 Pro let me extend this in time and also it seems to, to present a very nice sine wave yeah it's stable and it's pretty much stable on the signals here okay so I will now move directly to 1 megahertz this is 1 megahertz let me do a auto yeah it seems that we have to lower the amplitude I'm using uh, 1 volt VPP right now as you can see so 1 megahertz it still keeps the bandwidth also the VPP it's okay the maximum that we can go it's 50 nanoseconds in here okay this is 15 100 nanoseconds let's move this to 5 megahertz okay auto okay so this is 5 megahertz at the maximum bandwidth allowed uh, that's 50 nanoseconds it can not go further and we have a uh, 200 millivolts time division vertical time division this is peak to peak 920 millivolts it's still far from the 700 uh, limit that we have a minus 3 dB let's move this to 10 megahertz to see how it handles right now we are at the maximum this is the maximum that we have yeah we can lower a bit the amplitude to have a more correct sine wave more well drawn but yeah the signal is stable uh, we are now at 10 megahertz 800 millivolts uh, 820 30 something like that peak to peak so we didn't get to the 714 more or less of the minus 3 db let's move this to 15 
megahertz. Okay, now we are in trouble. Okay, it's stable on the 15 megahertz, but the signal is lowering uh, a bit of the 714 that we should have here. 14, yeah, around that, but we are nearly at 700. So I should say that this device is probably uh, 15 megahertz, and even so, it's pretty neat for a, such a, a small device and for that price range. Yeah, so yeah, let's move this to 18 megahertz just to see how the peak to peak will be. It's almost 100 millivolts of what should be. We have here 18 megahertz, RMS 233, and the peak to peak of 630 40 volt millivolts. So, yeah, yeah, I cannot say that, uh, in, in my opinion, this is a 18 megahertz. Um, oscilloscope, but even so, this is a uh, 27 euros, more or less 28, 29 dollars oscilloscope with a function generator that supports realistically 15 megahertz. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And yeah, the signal, even so, at the maximum, the signal is very, very stable. We don't see much flicker or anything else really 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 good this guy's at the uh, ziwi or ziway i don't know how to spell this do a very good work with the uh, oscilloscopes they do pretty happy with this really move let's see moving the up down it has a fast forward button if you keep pressing it will speed up yeah and you can go through the signal like this okay i'm going back to one megahertz i want to have yeah uh, a sine wave like this let's move on let me put this with 500 millivolts peak to peak yeah like this and let me show you now the persist let's see how it works the persist it's on display i want persist for one second okay and i will sweep yeah it works okay but it's a bit confusing but yeah that's the sweep mode i've chosen i didn't configure that for any specific value and it seems to, to work okay let me take this out let me do uh, auto okay so we have persist tested let me take the persist off ah that's why we we still have the persist on let me move to off okay we have the roll also but i will not test this this is pretty basic stuff and okay so i think we are done with this let me just show you some other uh, waveforms like the square okay one megahertz uh, square wave i don't know if we need to to lower the frequency of this uh, let's try a 500 kilohertz 400 and 100 kilohertz yeah always tricky this one okay so the sawtooth and i even have here another one but this is the one not this one and we are back to the sine wave yeah Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to disconnect this and connect the probe to check how the function generator works. Okay, so let's connect here the BNC cable and I'm using the probe that came with the oscilloscope. Okay, 
I have the the signal generator already working so this is already showing results let's do a auto and yeah we are on business this is a uh, one kilohertz peak-to-peak uh, -peak, and peak-to-peak -peak is fixed value uh, square wave let's see how we can work with the signal generator for that you have to menu you can you have to to use the last option and you have in this screen several options the first one is the frequency that you will use for the the signal that we will generate you have here the value and hertz kilohertz and megahertz it's a very pretty small letters but you should see it also you have the duty cycle that can be configured and the signal that you will create in this case we are talking about a square wave this on uh, indicates if this uh, the signal generator is on or off to navigate through the several options you just need to to move the arrows okay and position where you wish to use the the well the signal i'm not getting to the part uh, okay it's let me see i don't know why i'm not being able to change this ah okay it's in on okay and on okay you change the signal type you have i believe uh, nine signals, nine different signals to, to use. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's go to the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight different signals to use. Let's use the sine wave. We have one megahertz sine wave on the function generator. I will now press menu and OK. As you can see, it generates a pretty nice sine wave. Again, 2.5 uh, volts peak to peak, more or less. As you can see, it's 2.4. Uh, 1 megahertz table. Yeah, it seems OK. Jitters a bit. Uh, if you saw the previous signal from my Owen XDG to, to 2100, the signal was much more stable, but yeah, it's a different e equipment. It's not even uh, fair to, to do this comment. And yeah, look at this. This is the sine wave. Let's go and try another one. The square wave at one megahertz. We have the uh, TUSA, I think, or the triangle wave. Yeah, this is the tooth, uh, saw or saw to saw tooth. Alf. Okay, corrected. And noise. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Really cool this one. And you can change the frequency and everything else. Let me show you something. Many function generators don't do this. For example, if I here increase this to I don't know 16 kilohertz and now I go to the bandwidth uh, unit and change it to megahertz look what will happen yeah it will automatically correct the, the value not even all uh, function generators dedicated function generators do this operation I think the, the last one from Yuntech does not does do this. But yeah, yeah, pretty cool device. I love this. 27 euros. This is a, a steal. Okay, moving on. So it's only missing the tear down. Okay, so we have here the front with the display and we have, yeah, it's pretty basic. We have only a few ICs here, uh, resistors and stuff like that, the buttons. 
these devices made in two parts the front has some screws and the back also has some screws so we don't have much to see here i will put the front again and let's see the back Baby, you Okay, so here we have it. Let's first disconnect the battery. This is a, uh, let me see, 1000 milliamps hour battery, 3.2 uh, volts or 3.7 volts. Yeah, 3.7. This is quite compact there's a lot going on in here i will zoom in this and let's see what we have in here so i have the board here already zoomed in let's do just a quick layout scan we have quite a few components over here yeah relay okay that's basically it let me start by describing this uh, I see that we have on the center. So this one is a Wiener Micro W806. It's a 32-bit microcontroller, 240 megahertz. Yeah, it has quite a few features. It's one of those uh, Wiener Micro CPUs that are being used a lot by Chinese manufacturers. This is made in China. Uh, and it has, for example, 44 GPUs and five PWMs, four ADCs, and a lot of stuff, like six watts. It's packed with stuff. Uh, it's a pretty cheap processor, pretty small, and it has a lot of stuff to, to deliver. Right on the, on the right, <laughs> we have this one. It was scratched, so I, I don't know what it is, to, to be honest. Uh, I thought that it, it was the ADC, but we still have uh, ADC also here on the right. It's a, a 3PA-9280. So this is a monolithic single supply, 8-bit, uh, 32 mega samples per second, analog to digital converter. And let me see and let me move this yeah ah, we have also here this let me see the 74 yeah 74 c for uh, 40 51 uh, this is a high speed cmos logic analog multiplexer and the multiplexer uh, I don't think this is from TI, but yeah, we have next, next, I think it's next uh, uh, instruments or something like that, that has also this IC. Okay, let's move a bit to the top. On the top, what we have here on the right, we have a high voltage, let me see. Yeah, it's a sub-miniature high voltage relay. Uh, it has a maximum of 2 amps switching capability and yeah it's basically uh, basically a relay also we have this GS8094 and this I see it's a 350 megahertz CMOS rail-to-rail -rail output op amps this particular module hey, is a quad uh, rail to rail output voltage feedback amplifier and yeah let's see what else we have okay so we have here two more ICs that we might talk about the first one on the center it's a USB to serial port chip it's the CH340 it's quite common nowadays. It's used in a lot of uh, cases. For example, uh, ASP boards, a lot of them use this chip to communicate and to upload the data and everything else. 
And another one that is used nowadays quite frequently, it's the TP4056. It's 1M standalone linear Lion battery charger with thermal regulation. So this is for charging the battery and it's uh, position right uh, to the side of the battery connector. Yeah, we have this on off switch also in this part. One thing that I have to, to mention is this doesn't have a connection to the PC. The USB is only used to charge uh, the, the device. And yeah, I think that's it. We have a few, ah, we have here also a MC34063A. So this one, it's a peak boost buck or inverting switch regulator. It can uh, input a voltage from 3 volts to 40 volts and output switch current up to 1.5 amps. Yeah, very nice. And finally, I think that's it. I don't see anything else in here. Yeah. It's a pity they, they do this, I don't know why, maybe for commercial reasons or just so we don't find out that they are using chips that don't have the capacity that they say, like the frequency or something like that. Okay, this is it, let me just unzoom so you can see the all boards. Okay, let me just put this in, in focus. Okay, let me close this and assemble everything. So let's wrap this up and let me tell you what I think of this device. Well, like the previous reviews I did on the SO 1511G and I think the SO 2512G oscilloscopes, I think like those, this DSO 154 Pro is a very well sought device, small, reliable and with some interesting features. One of my previous complaints was the total lack of support channels, but that was solved. You have now the zway.com website, quite simple, but at least you can download the user manuals and have the contact form. <laughs> Not even close to be perfect, but it's a lot better than it was before. Taking as reference the January 2023 prices, it is listed on AliExpress with a price of approximately 27 euros. This is around 29, 29 American bucks. In this price range, it is the only one with a bandwidth of 18 MHz and a sampling rate of 40 mega samples per second. Adding to this, you have also the fact that it delivers a fully functional function generator. No, not only the usual square wave output, it delivers 8 different waveforms, so it's really nice what you get for the price. You even have persistence in the signal display. The operation and key usage are very user-friendly and easy to use. So it's my opinion that this is a non-brainer purchase. So if you are on the market for a cheap oscilloscope, remember that you have the affiliate link in the description and you can use also the affiliate access links in the screen. It will be the same price to you, but you are helping me to maintain this channel by using these links. If you learned something and this video was useful to you, please smack that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell to activate all notifications and be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. That's it for today. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, stay safe.